I run a studio practice with my partner, Abigail. It's called Forest and Found. We both have our individual practices, but we tend to, a lot of the time, exhibit and curate our work together. We love to do public installations and, and things where there's a real engagement with a public audience. I predominantly produce sculptural wooden vessels turned and then there's quite a lot of hand carving and processes afterwards. We both studied fine art at Chelsea College of Art and realised that there was similarities in approach to making. And when we graduated, we set up a studio so that we had somewhere to make and to produce work. We turned to materials that were locally available to us, either for free or really quite cheap. I'd always worked with wood from being tiny, making things, and it was just something that I'd started to get reacquainted with. I made an impulse buy of a wood lathe and then had to figure out how to use that. We spent a month in France. We took the lathe with us and there was an old sewing machine there and we just spent a month off-grid learning those processes. What was nice, that naivety of not having any formal training in wood turning, was all of the mistakes that I made. That immersion in learning a craft, when those mistakes become interested, then it started to come back around to having a fine art practice. That way of thinking and making things become more sculptural. We're always in search of that sense of escape to the natural landscape. Epping Forest is about a 15, 20 minute drive away and it's a really amazingly diverse, beautiful environment. We go on a lot of walks in and around of Epping. We work with the Forestry Commission they're an amazing resource and contact to have. They're doing massive regeneration projects within the forest. They keep a certain amount back for working with artists and craftsmen. If I'm working on something big or I'm producing quite a lot, when I'm making, I'm quite prolific. And that sometimes that needs to happen. If I get like a load of green wood, I need to process it and work with it quite quick, otherwise it starts to split and move and sometimes goes a bit too far to then work with. So I've got three lathes in here in a 10 by 12 space. For the moment it's pretty fit for purpose. On the evolution chuck, the, just the gripping power is amazing. It had a 18 inch in diameter big lump of cedar which it was absolutely no problem and it's good to be safe in the mind that actually the equipment I'm using is standing up to the tasks I'm asking of it. The shapes and profiles that I make have that sort of elevated foot, taking a lot of inspiration from ceramics, from cultures, from different times, different time periods. That technical process of turning, that whole journey, everything I make, I'm in search of that perfect sense of height. They're not functional in as much as they're not a salad bowl or a soup bowl. My background is as an artist and, and making sculpture and objects so that sense of being able to actually physically engage with them as well is quite important for me. Especially on bigger pieces is quite physical. You know it's physically demanding. Sometimes it can be really hard work you're literally levering your entire body weight. I just absolutely love it. Because I've been turning for quite a while now. A lot of the cuts kind of muscle memory. You become quite proficient with tools you're using, the profiles of, of the gouges. To be at a certain point turning something and think, actually, I know that I need to be able to cut in in a specific way. That's really nice. <laughs> 